So today we're going to be talking about section 13.6 or 3.6, depending on the book. And we're going to be talking about probabilities of mutually exclusive events. So mutually exclusive is when two things cannot happen at the same time. So an easy example that we might be able to look at would be like it being sunny out and it being rainy out, right? Those cannot happen at the exact same time. Now, I know there's times where it's sunny and kind of rainy, but you know what I mean, right? It's either sunny or it's raining, right? They don't happen at the same time. Those are considered mutually exclusive, right? And so basically, uh, that is when we're looking at an or event. It's either sunny or it's rainy. It's not sunny, rainy out, okay? It's not a thing. That's mutually exclusive, right? So we're going to look at some examples and we're going to decide whether things are mutually exclusive or not. So we'll say mutually exclusive, meaning they cannot happen at the same time, is N M E, or not mutually exclusive, meaning they could happen at the same time, is N M E, right? So a junior winning the election or a senior winning the election? Can they both, can you have someone who is a junior and a senior at the same time? The answer is no. So these are considered mutually exclusive, right? They cannot happen at the same time. How about the next one? A sophomore winning the election and a female winning the election. Well, think about it. Could you have a female sophomore? You can. So that would be not mutually exclusive events, meaning they are not independent of each other. And finally, the next one, drawing an ace or a club from a standard deck. So can I draw an ace? Yes, I can. Can I draw a club? Yes, I can. Can I draw the ace of clubs? Yes, I can. So these are not mutually exclusive events either, right? So there's some examples. So uh, here's a couple guided practice problems that you can look at as well to determine. Now, one way to determine how to figure out if something is mutually exclusive is to check out their probabilities independently. So think about this. a The chance of rolling a three or a four on a die. Well, the chance of rolling a three is one out of six and the chance of rolling a four is one out of six so together that's two out of six or one third right it's one out of three now notice that the probabilities is the same as if i did the probability of three happening which is one out of six the chance of um rolling a four is one out of six and so when i add them i also get one third so since it's the same by adding them they're considered mutually exclusive and that's how we find how to find their probabilities. We take to find the probability of an or happening is I add both uh, the probability of A happening and the probability of B. So let's look at uh, an example here uh, and try and figure that out. So it says that Romero is making a playlist that consists of songs from three different albums in his favorite artist list. It, uh, if he lets his digital media player select songs from the list at random, what is the probability that the first song played is from album one or album two? All right, so they're mutually exclusive. You can't pick one from album one um, and album two at the same time, right? So the chance of, well, how many total songs are there? Well, let's add them up. So 10 plus 12 is 22, plus 13 is uh, 35, right? There are 35 total songs on his thing. So the probability of from album one or album two is the probability of choosing from album one, which is 10 out of 35, plus the probability of choosing from album two, which is 12 out of 35, right? And so the chance of that happening would be 22 out of 35 because we have common denominator, we can just add them. So that's the chance of it coming from one or album two. All right. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we can just, we add the probabilities to figure it out. Now, uh, let's look at a couple guided practice problems. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at letter B. It says, if you win the ring toss game at a certain carnival, you receive a stuffed animal. If the stuffed animal is selected at random from above, from among 15 puppies, 16 kitties, 14 frogs, 25 snakes, and 10 unicorns, what's the probability that the winner will receive a puppy, a kitty, or a unicorn? So um, I want you to try this one now in your, in your notes. Now, let's look at conditional probabilities, right? It says we're going to look for the probability of a number greater than two or even. 
So I think of all the numbers that are greater than two. Well, that would be three, four, five, and six, right? And I'm gonna look at all my evens. So I'll do that in a different color. Okay, all my evens are two, four, six, right? But what do you notice between my two sets of numbers? Notice I have four counted in both of them and six counted in both of them. But I only can roll a six one time or a four one time. So what we have to do is we have to eliminate the extras, right? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say the probability of rolling a number greater than four is four out of six, right? Four out of six. Plus the probability of rolling an even, which is three out of six, which you'll notice four plus three is seven, which is bigger than 100%, which cannot happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract our crossover. <coughs> and there's two numbers that cross over. So we're gonna subtract two out of six. And so what we end up getting is a five out of six. And so you'll notice if I was to count every number once, there would be two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five out of six total numbers, which is five, six. So the equation that we use or the formula we use is this, the probability of A happening plus the probability of B happening, and then the probability of both A and B happening. So we're going to subtract the, that, um, that basically double count because we don't want to have an extra large percentage. Okay, let's look at example three. And this is what it says. The table shown are the number and types of paintings that Namiko has created. If she randomly selects a painting to submit to an art contest, what is the probability that she selects an, a portrait or an oil painting? Okay, so we're going to say the probability of a portrait or oil painting. Okay, now P and O uh, are probably not the best ways to abbreviate, but that's okay. Instead of writing too much, we can do that. All right, so what's the probability of picking a portrait? Okay, well, how many total are there? There is uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and zero total. Okay, so there is, um, what is it? It's ten, right? Um, and the total number uh, of, well, let's see. Let's, let's try and figure out the total number here. Okay, so the total number is uh, adding up all the numbers. So 4 plus 5 plus 3 would be 12, 13, um, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then that would be 30. There's a total of 30 paintings. So, okay, so all I did is just add up how many of everything there are. Okay, so... First off, the probability of a portrait, we said it was 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 out of 30, right? Now I'm going to look at um, the probability of picking an oil painting. So her oil paintings are right here. And so there's 1, uh, 4, 5, 6. So there's 6 out of 30, right? But you'll notice that when I crossed them out, there's this little guy right here, this three, that would be oil portrait paintings. So I have to subtract my double counted um, of both of them occurring. And so uh, 10 plus six is 16 minus three is 13 out of 30. That's my probability of it happening um, between picking a portrait or an oil painting. And obviously a oil portrait painting is this three out of 10 that we had to get rid of. Okay, now we can also find what is called a complement. It's basically the event of not what we want to happen, right? So if we know the probability of rolling a five is one out of six on a number cube, all right? So the probability of five, let's say, equals one out of six. The probability of not five, meaning anything else, would be one minus five, or excuse me, one minus one out of six, which would be five out of six, right? So picking any number other than a five would be five out of the total six. And so we have this formula right here, one out of six. And we know how to do this, okay? It makes sense. Like if we think about our original mutually exclusive event, which was it being sunny out, let's say it's 70% chance of sun, then you could tell me what is the chance of it being rainy? Well, the chance of it being rainy then 
would be 1 minus 70%, or what we would call 30%, right? Because altogether, they add up to 100%, because there is 100% chance of weather occurring. All right, so here's an example. It says, Francisco bought 20 raffle tickets, hoping that she wins a $100 gift card for her favorite clothing store. If the total of 300 raffle tickets were sold, what is the probability that Francine will not win the gift card? Okay, what's the probability that Francine doesn't win that card? Well, if we think about it, her chance of actually winning it is 20 out of 300, which we can reduce down, take a zero away, take two out of it, one out of 15, right? But the probability of her, so we'll, we'll say W for winning, right? The probability of not winning, not W, is going to be 1 minus 1 out of 15, which would be 14 out of 15, right? That's the probability of her not winning. So the probability of it not winning is probably really good. Now, here is an example. Chance of rain being 70%. What's the probability it will not rain? Let's say be sunny. Uh, we can figure that out just like we did before. Okay, so here are all our probability rules. And if I were you, what I would do is make sure that I pause the video now and write these or look at them in your notes so that we know. Okay, so independent events, we multiply their probabilities. Dependent events, what we do is we find the probability of the first and the probability of the second happening over the first. Now, conditional probabilities are um, when we know um, something, uh, about, something is known about an event. Mutually exclusive is when they cannot happen at the same time. Not mutually exclusive is when they can happen at the same time. A little bit tricky. Remember, that's the joke. And then um, complementary events are the probability of not happening is, the, uh, is just one minus which think about it, one would be 100% minus the percentage that you're wondering as well, okay? All right, so here we go. We're gonna identify a proper or a um, probability based upon just a problem, okay? It says, suppose two people are chosen at random from a group of 100 American motorists and passengers. If the group mirrors the population, what is the probability that at least one of them is not wearing their seatbelt? Now, what you don't see over on the side is it says from a study, 80% of people, 80% of people wear their seatbelt. Okay. So we're going to say wear their seatbelt, right? And it says, okay, that it says, um, suppose two people are chosen at random from a group of 100. Uh, if the group mirrors the population, which we said is 80% wear it, what is the probability that at least one of them does not wear a seatbelt? So this is what we do. All right. Probability of at least one, okay, does not wear their seatbelt. So there's a couple different things, ways we do it. Okay. The probability of them both wearing their seatbelt, right? We said this would be uh, 80%, which would be uh, four out of five or eight out of 10 times eight out of 10, right? And so that would be a total of 16 out of 25, right? Now, the probability of at least one of them not wearing their seatbelt is just the opposite or um, the complement of this, because that would include uh, one not wearing the seatbelt, either this guy not, or this guy not, or both of them not, right? Both of them not wearing the seatbelt, which is a possibility. And so what we do is the probability of at least one is going to be one minus the probability of both of them, which would be 16 out of 25. And so then that would be um, nine out of 25, okay? So another way you could have done this, this is one way that... Um, you can do it. The other way to do it would be this, okay? So the probability that person one doesn't, okay? So that would be, person one doesn't, would be um, uh, one out of five, right? Times uh, the person two actually doing it would be four out of five, so that would be four out of 25, right? 
chance of person two doesn't, right, would also be four out of 25, right? You just do the opposite. And then probably that one and two don't would be one out of five times one out of five would be one out of 25. So four plus four plus one would also be nine out of 25. So there's two different ways to do this one. Okay. All right. So here is a guided practice problem that you can end on. Good luck. Try your best. And uh, we'll see you later.